Welcome to System View Introduction to Fixed Point FIR Design. This video is part two of a two part video. The part A of this video was Introduction to Digital Filter Design uh, using System View. In part two, this video, we will show how to convert a floating point uh, FIR filter into a fixed point FIR filter and how to use the uh, digital filter uh, graphical user interface of system view to design fixed point digital filters and optimize uh, tap word lengths for a given uh, performance metric and then use that fixed point FIR filter model in a subsequent simulation and also export that model to VHDL using system views uh, HDL code generator and then finally verify the performance of that fixed point FIR filter code using the co-simulation interface between System View and Mentor's Model Sim simulator. So let us pick up where we left off in the Introduction to Digital Filter Design video and take the floating point low pass FIR filter that was created in that video tutorial and convert that FIR filter to a fixed point FIR filter and then port that fixed point bit true FIR filter to our HDL code generator to generate fully synthesizable VHDL that can then be used in a FPGA or ASIC design flow. So to start I will take the FIR filter and I will right mouse click and open up the filter designer UI and here we can see the same low pass response and impulse response that was created using the introduction to digital filter design tutorial. Uh, I'm going to keep all of the design parameters the same and simply change the data type from floating point to fixed point. Once I do that you can see a new UI appear or a new set of uh, parameters appear in the filter designer UI that allow me to control the word length of the tap coefficients in my FIR, FIR filter and also control the numeric quantiza quantization and overflow handling uh, for that filter design. The fixed point filter is a bit true uh, fixed point filter that is modeled in twos complement fixed point arithmetic. So hence I have control over both the fractional word length and the integer word length for that sign to complement model. So as I change the word length parameter here you can see the response change accordingly and here I can optimize uh, manually the number of bits that I might want to assign to this filter to trade off the area that this filter will take up inside an FPGA or an ASIC with the desired response type. And as you can see, uh, as I limit the number of bits to the tap coefficient uh, word length, fractional word length, the frequency response changes. Uh, the passband response actually looks fairly uh, well behaved, but the out of band rejection uh, is violating our original design criteria of 50 dB. So I need to add uh, some more bits to the design and it looks like uh, 14 bits may be a good compromise. Actually, that's looking quite good. Let's maybe go to 12 bits. And 12 bits is a good compromise where I have a, a slight uh, degradation in my uh, uh, out-of-band rejection for this FIR filter, but have limited the number of bits to save area in the design. So now that I've adjusted the word length, I'm actually finished with the conversion process to convert the floating point design to a fixed point design. And I simply need to close the filter designer UI. And you can now see that the symbol for the FIR filter has changed from a blue arrowed symbol, which represents a floating point model, to a magenta arrowed symbol, which represents a fixed point model. Now, in order to simulate this model, I do need to modify my schematic uh, just a little bit. I need to first modify my input to convert my floating point number to fixed point and this is needed to do the numeric conversion correctly uh, for HDL code generation. So I need to switch from my algorithm library to my hardware design library and in the hardware design library I can type in float to fix which or FXP which will 
bring me to the float to fixed point converter and I can just take that and place that on my schematic. Now I will also note that if I keep the uh, impulse response or impulse source level, level uh, at the sample rate which is what we did in the previous tutorial to generate an impulse response and a frequency response that was correct uh, this will force the filter to go into overflow so I'm just going to go ahead and change that back to a unit impulse and select the numeric type here to be 32-bit to um, uh, have the signal level uh, match the uh, data signal level in the FIR filter which I'll show you in a second and also change, make sure that the filter is set to be a or the, the data converter is set to be a signed uh, twos complement with a integer value of two. I now also to uh, scale the filter appropriately so that the frequency response and impulse response match that of the floating point I need to go back to my algorithm library and simply add a ideal gain block and insert that gain block at the output and set its value to the sample rate just so that my response matches and that was 80 e to the 3 or 80 kilosample per second. Now I can go ahead and re-simulate this model and you can see that the response has changed uh, relative to the floating point model but does reflect the response variation that we saw in the filter designer UI. So I now have a fixed point representation of that FIR filter and I am now ready to port this design to HDL code. So there is an additional step that needs to be done on the schematic. Uh, the HDL code generator, which I will add in a second, uh, allows uh, the porting of subnetworks to HDL code generation. So I need to just simply turn my FIR filter model into a subnetwork and I can do that by just selecting that model or any collection of models and select right mouse click and select convert to subnetwork and I'm just going to type in a simple name FXP underscore FIR click OK and here you can see the new subnetwork model that was created with a port at the input and output just close that schematic and you also can see on the workspace tree that a new model was added uh, which is uh, the representative of the subnetwork model. So I need to manually just delete this model and reinstantiate this new subnetwork and if I push into this subnetwork again you will see the original FIR filter model. So now with the FIR filter encapsulated in a subnetwork I can go to my workspace tree add an HDL code generator which is accessible from a right mouse click anywhere in the workspace tree. And I can open up the code generator and here I make sure that the top level design is selected to the top level design that contains my filter. Then I select the subnetwork that I want which is the subnetwork that I created. Add that to my HDL code generator panel. You could also change the output directory where the HDL files are written to uh, by selecting the output directory dialog and uh, you could do that by unchecking the default directory and I'm going to go ahead and change my working directory to a different working directory so I'm just going to select my workspaces under my documents and select test and then uh, in the lower portion of the HDL uh, code generator UI I can uh, select how the code generator behaves so I can generate uh, target agnostic HDL <clears throat> or I can generate HDL for Xilinx FPGAs and what that does is that opens up a new set of options to allow me to select the Xilinx Vertex family uh, the FPGA device and the FPGA packaging uh, options so that I can go ahead and map the I.O. of my HDL design to specific pins in an Xilinx FPGA uh, and also uh, set the digital clock module inside a Xilinx FPGA to minimize the manual uh, intervention between system view and Xilinx tools. Uh, uh, using the Xilinx option system view will script Xilinx ISC completely 
uh, behind the scenes and will generate the final bit file for manual download into the Xilinx FPGA. So for this example, I'm just going to generate uh, HDL only, and you have the option of generating both VHDL and Verilog. I'm going to generate VHDL, and you have the option of generating uh, test vectors for use in standalone HDL verification uh, with tools like ModelSim. Uh, when we select uh, test vector generation on, System View will uh, create a uh, top level uh, VHDL wrapper uh, for model sim along with uh, test vector data at the input and output points of the subnetwork that was selected here. So with these basic options I will go ahead and click generate and you can see the system view simulation server pops up. It said generating HDL. The HDL code uh, was now generated and that code uh, now exists on my file system in the directory listed. Now, one additional verification step that you can make is to uh, run a simulation of the design, uh, not with the fixed point model, but with the actual HDL code. Uh, with the HDL code generator, once uh, the HDL code was successfully created, System View also created a new model that is associated with the subnetwork that allows this simulation to be run with HDL COSIM. Uh, co-simulation is uh, supported by uh, Mentor Graphics Model Sim, uh, so I have Model Sim installed on my machine. And to access that, I just need to double-click on my subnetwork, and in the model dialog pull-down, uh, there is now a new model associated with this symbol that's called HDL Code Generator um, uh, at Dataflow Models. And if I select that model, uh, the the model interface uh, changes to show you the uh, mentor model sim co-simulation interface and here I can select uh, different parameters of the design uh, but by default I can go ahead and just click OK and run the simulation and here you can see in the simulation server that it's using uh, model sim to compile the HDL and it will then run a streaming co-simulation between system view and uh, model sim now, in, in the case of this particular design, Model Sim is being run with the graphical user interface uh, being turned off, and the, the simulation runs very fast. I also have the option, if I want to debug my HDL code in Model Sim, I can come back to the part dialog for the subnetwork, and under the second tab, HDL settings, I can select Display HDL Simulator uh, GUI, and now when I click Simulate, it'll bring open the model sim uh, graphical user interface where we can actually see the simulation run inside of model sim. So right now system view is setting up model sim and now it started model sim. That should be coming up here in a second. And here's the model sim UI. And you can see it compiled and loaded the model and now at this point since I have the GUI running uh, both simulators are paused, and to run the simulation to completion, I just need to type a command into the uh, vSim command window, and I'll just write, uh, just type in run minus all, which will run the simulation to completion. And now you can see that the model sim uh, waveform viewer has updated with the data uh, from the run, and I can come in here and use uh, model sim as a debug console if I needed to debug my VHDL code. And if I just go ahead and icon that, again, you can see that the frequency response and impulse response uh, was run correctly. So again, in this video, just to summarize, since we uh, covered a quite, a quite a few things, we looked at converting the floating point FIR filter <coughs> design um, by using the filter designer graphical user interface to convert the floating point FIR to fixed point FIR. We then ran a fixed point simulation using System View's native fixed point simulator to uh, show the fixed point response of the FIR filter. We then generated VHDL uh, for this design using System View and then verify that the HDL uh, in fact gives us the right response by enabling HDL co simulation from within the System View user interface. I hope this video tutorial was helpful and I hope you enjoy using System View and please see some of the other tutorial videos that we have 
for helping you with other tasks using Agile and System View.